cool. Uh, and then uh, to let everyone know, uh, we're, we are recording these sessions, um, so they will be available afterwards. Uh, today's session is on parton energy loss, and uh, our, our lecturer uh, will be uh, Chathu uh, Siramana. And uh, let's see, what before, before we start, I just want to let everyone know that uh, the Slack channel is open. It's uh, titled July 21 dash Parton energy loss. Uh, and that's an excellent resource for asking questions. We have several uh, folks monitoring the channel uh, and the responses tend to be very, very quick. So even if you tend to fall behind, uh, especially as we get onto the hands-on, uh, the Slack channel is, is just a great place to, to pose your question and get an answer rather quickly and see what, what other questions are being answered. Okay, so without anything further, Oh yeah, ask please. Also, ask questions on the channel as well, and then we'll we'll answer them in re in real time uh, as part of the lecture. Okay, so without uh, further delay, I'll turn it over to to Chathu. So go ahead. Um, actually, Ismail is is speaking first, and then uh, Chad ah. is, is coming in uh, after. So, okay. Uh, sorry for the confusion. So Ismail, please. Yeah, so I will be doing the lecture, and then Chathu will do the hands on after. Yeah, so to, uh, hi everyone. So today I want to, uh, to do a lecture on uh, an overview of uh, jet physics and energy loss in quark gluon plasma. And so the lecture today will try to be kind of an overview with this, some introduction and just general view of the different uh, uh, scales and the uh, different assumptions that come into um, Monte Carlo energy loss. And then I will talk about how it's implemented in Jetscape and then also present some of the recent Jetscape results. So to start with the introduction. So uh, as you have heard before and throughout this uh, this week of uh, the summer school, we, we know that the uh, quark gluon plasma is created in uh, heavy ion collisions. However, this quark gluon plasma is, of course, uh, not directly detected, but uh, only signatures can be detected of this uh, of, of the quark gluon plasma. And so you, you've heard of collective flow signatures like uh, anisotropic uh, coefficients that you saw how you can describe them what well, had had the dynamics in the lecture on Wednesday that that was one signature of of the QGP then there is also uh, heavy flavor modification which we will hear about on Monday how heavy flavor is modified by the QGP or, and there's also other signatures like the strange enhancements and so on but the main topic of today is, is jet quenching as signature of the QGP. And jet quenching was this idea that was uh, first developed in the 80s by Bjorken, who predicted that uh, if there was a quark gluon plasma in these heavy ion collisions compared to PP collisions, then these hard uh, partons that are created at the early stages of the collision, they cannot freely go to the detector, but they have to go through the medium before being detected. And so by going through this medium, they will lose their energy and become quenched. And so we will not get the full partons and we have this energy loss in the medium. Yeah. So, so as these high energy partons go through the medium and lose their energy they they can be used as probes to understand the medium because by interacting with the medium they they can this interaction is encoded by some medium properties that today I will talk about the, one of the main uh, property that we study which is this q hat which is this transpose coefficient and we try which can teach us how the medium is, is coupled to the hard partons. And so one of the main uh, 
theories that allows us to study these hard probes this is factorization so factorization come the way you can understand factorization is by looking at the uh, asymptotic freedom property of QCD, which tells you that if as if you have a probe with an energy Q here, as you your energy the energy of the probe Q becomes higher and higher, then the coupling of QCD actually becomes smaller and smaller. And what this means is that at very high energies, which translate to very short distances, then QCD can be seen as a asymptotically free theory. And so this can help help us understand these uh, interactions using uh, perturbative methods and by uh, factoring out non-perturbative properties. And this is this is what's usually done in PP collisions where you take the hard process of two protons uh, scatterings and you describe it as a, a partonic process of, for example, here gluon scattering. And then these gluons are then taken from a non perturbative object, which is this parton distribution function, and which encode the non perturbative effects. And which can be extracted from from experiments, and then you have the hard process here, which is a partonic process that can come from uh, PQCD, and then again the hadronization after the the scattering, which is non-perturbative, can be encoded into fragmentation functions, these non-perturbative objects as well, and so this. These PDFs, these parton distribution functions, give you the probability of finding a parton A, so the small a, in a hadron with capital A, so like a proton with a momentum fraction PA divided by the momentum of the proton. And the same is the similar way you can see the fragmentation function is as the probability of a parton to fragment into a hadron with some fragment, uh, momentum fraction of the original parton. And so these uh, PDFs, they follow an evolution, which you've you heard of, uh, about uh, on Monday. They follow this peak lab evolution, which is through some uh, evolution. And It, in the momentum transfer in this hard probe energy. So if you look at the PDFs for, for, for the prod on, what you see is that as the probe energy is small, you see that the proton is is made up of this, uh, uh, this valence quarks at high momentum fraction at uh, around 0 0.3, which is the U and the D quark. We have here the PDF peaked, but at low momentum fraction, you have the, this huge C quarks and gluons. As you can see here, the gluon PDF is divided by 10. And then as you go to higher and higher energies, so as you probe smaller and smaller distances, you start to see more and more of these C quarks and gluons, and they become dominant. And this evolution is described by this peak lab evolution, of, which is this uh, integral the differential equation in, uh, in the this, in the scale mu. So, so usually the scale mu is sometimes denoted as q squared or mu squared or t. And so you have this differential equation that encodes here splittings of the PDFs. So on the left on the left is the real splittings where the quark here radiates a gluon or or a gluon can also radiate a gluon. You have all the different splittings. And then you have this virtual corrections, which are these virtual diagrams without an where the gluon radiated gets reabsorbed. And these uh, 
actually tame the divergences here at a small z. But however, this equation can, of course cannot be solved directly in the Monte Carlo, but there are some techniques to solve. This is to use this Sudakov form factor, which if you take this Sudakov, which is this exponential, uh, exponential of this uh, integral of the splitting function, you can write the deep lab equation as a, this integral equation and you don't have any derivatives anymore. So you kind of solve the deep lab equation in kind of a green function way. And what you, you see then is that here, this Sudakov, what it tells you is the probability of having no branching between a, a, some small scale T0 and, and T. So the distribution doesn't change if if there was no branching. And then you have this ratio here that gives you the probability of branching between T prime and T, which is then folded with this splitting function. And so this part gives you the resummation of the different branches between T prime and T with this integral. And so using these two probabilities, you can write and very simply write a Monte Carlo that that just takes the probability of no branching and turns it into a, a, a kind of a, a Monte Carlo generators, where you have here also the splitting function that will give you the probability of the momentum fraction, fraction Z of the branching. And so using this evolution, you can then have a forward evolution in time from a high virtual parton that comes from the scattering. So after the scattering, the parton will have a high virtuality and then it starts to lose the virtuality and goes to lower and lower virtualities as the time goes on. So maybe this is a good first time to stop if there are any questions or if I'm going too fast. Okay, any any questions for Ismail? And let me let me just check in with my uh, the uh, summer school chair. Should do we want to also take questions from raised hands or or still uh, can constrain them to Slack? No, people are welcome to raise their hands if uh, if that works better. So I'm not seeing any questions on the Slack. <clears throat> yeah, I think you can you can continue. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so let me just repeat this last part. So, so as the hard scattering happens, this high this partons will gain gain some uh, virtuality, which, which then they lose by radiating gluons or by gluons splitting into q q bar pairs. And so actually this picture, you have to think about it from right to left because the scale here, yeah. Because you, you start from a large scale T and then you go to a lower, lower scale as you lose virtuality. But that's for the partons after the scattering. However, now I want to just briefly talk about the initial state radiation. So uh, before you go on, um, there's a request from on uh, Slack. Can you please explain the DGLAB equation uh, again? Yeah. So the DGLAB equation is is this uh, equation that resumes this. Uh, these radiations of the, so for example, if you have a, a PDF here or maybe, yeah, of, or a fragmentation function. So maybe we'll talk about fragmentation function for final state radiation. So the fragmentation function is the probability of having a hadron uh, ca coming from a fragmenting quark. So if you, uh, from a fragmenting parton. So if you start here with a gluon, 
then you have a probability of having a hadron here with some momentum fraction of this initial gluon. And as you can see, as the gluon will evolve, so the gluon will get created here with some high virtuality and then evolves and fragments into lower and lower virtualities. And so as you evolve, you, you, you start doing these splits, which can be resumed into this into this uh, equilab equation. And, and so this differential equation can understand as a, as the scale here mu. So here you have the real emissions. So quark radiates an actual emission with the splitting function that gives you the probability of the of the fragment uh, the C fraction to go to the gluon. So you start with the x over c in the quark and then x this x times one minus c divided by z goes to the gluon and then x goes to the quark. And then on the right, you have these virtual corrections to the diagram that uh, come with a negative sign. So they correct this, these real diagrams. And what it turns out is they they change the, the, the divergences at z because this this di diagram here is divergent as, as c goes to zero. And so these are corrections that stop this divergence. And the point is to, to make this work in a Monte Carlo because this splitting function here is divergent. You cannot plug this directly to a Monte Carlo because it cannot be seen as a probability distribution. Instead, you write the suda cop form factor, which takes the splitting function without the divergence, uh, which is this exponential of the splitting function without the divergence. And then if you use this suda cop form factor, you can solve the, the differential part of the equation and just write it as an integral equation. And you see that first part, which gives you back the same distribution you started with, comes with this distribute uh, probability of no branching. So if there was no branching between T0 and T, then the, you get the same distribution. And then this ratio between probability of no branching at T from T0 to T and then from T0 to T prime gives you the probability of no branching between T prime and T. So all the branchings are happening between T0 and T prime. And so these have to be resumed using the splitting function. And so with these two probabilities, you can then write a Monte Carlo that just takes these and turns them into some rate and computes different splittings and then uses the splitting function as the probability of the distribution of the momentum fraction to, to define the momentum fraction at each step. However, when we want to, to sample the hard scattering in, in this Monte Carlo, so before the hard scattering, these partons can also have some fragmentation in the initial state. And so technically we should start with the with hard partons that come from the PDF and then they fragment and, and then some of these fragments will will scatter and then we end up with some products that again fragment. But however, this this will be very hard to find the fragments that can actually scatter. So instead, one samples the hard scattering first, and then they take we take the final state partons and fragment them into a final state shower. But then the initial state partons, we can again try to do the same shower, but now in a kind of backward in time evolution. And so then comes the, the, how to how to generate an initial state shower. So in backward in time shower, where like here you have the hash scattering, and then you go backward in time, finding all the branches that that this quark came from. So. Um... 
there's a question in the Slack, Ishmael, that's uh, asking you, is T prime greater than T? And I think two slides before where you were showing the Sudaka. Yeah, there. T, T prime is between, is, should be smaller than T is. T zero and T, because it's the integral variable. But when you do this backward evolution, now the virtuality actually becomes a negative. You find that there's a negative vir virtuality that will still go from a large uh, absolute value to a small uh, T zero. And however, now that you know that this this parton came from from some specific uh, for example, a proton that has a specific PDF at some t zero scale. So when you go backward, then you cannot just use the Sudakov directly to have the probability of the, of these branchings. But instead, you you have to multiply it by the PDF because then you have to constrain how much the momentum fraction of the of the parton because it comes from a proton with a known energy uh, which is the square root of s divided by two and so the then the backward sudakov is, becomes modified with this pdfs and the same happens for the splitting function it gets multiplied by the pdf because you, you cannot have any z fraction because now the, the Z fraction, the, you are going from a parton with a momentum X to one with momentum X over Z. So as Z is between zero and one, then as you go back, you actually gain momentum, more and more momentum, but you are constrained by the PDF that tells you how much the parton can have from these distributions. And that's the main difference between this forward evolution for the final state and uh, initial state radiation that goes into this backward uh, evolution. So now once you have all these evolutions, you have the parton that comes from the PDF and fragments in this initial state shower and then goes into the hard scattering and then it, the final state is fragments into the final state shower that then hadronizes and can be studied. Yeah, before I go to the medium interactions, maybe there are other questions. Okay. So, yeah, so this was a brief introduction into PP collisions or how partons fragment in a PP collisions, but however, in, in a in a medium in heavy ion collisions where we know that there is a medium that gets created, it, there is other effects that can happen. So, so if we again define different stages for these collisions, so first we have the initial production, which should be similar to PP. That is because it happens at very high energies, which also means very short times. And so it shouldn't be modified by By the QGP at these short times. And then there is the vacuum shower that due to formation time effects that I'll explain later, it, it mainly happens before the medium fragmentation. So the medium fragmentation, which comes slower than the vacuum shower, then where the medium start to resolve these uh, fragments from the from the parton, and then they start to interact with the medium, leading to uh, elastic energy loss and the, the dominant effect, which is this in medium splittings. And then at the end, once you go out of the medium, you have hydronization that should mostly also be similar to PP in a vacuum. 
And the interesting thing about hard probes is that because of the fact that they have such high energies compared to the temperature of the medium, this leads to a large separation of scales between the hard probes and the medium. And then you can again employ PQCD studies and to learn about uh, interactions between the hard probe and the medium. And so the at leading order, the main processes that happen between the the main processes of energy loss are elastic scatterings, which is just two to two scatterings that lead to kind of diffusion and drag. And there's also some processes that are called conversion, where because of these diagrams, if, like for example, a high energetic gluon can scatter with a quark and then convert into a high energetic quark while the gluon becomes a, at the scale of the medium and vice versa. The quark can also convert into a gluon and these will be important for chemical equilibration. Actually, we've had some studies on how these can be also used to, to study the QTP that I might talk about if I have some time at the end. And then because of the multiple soft scattering with the medium, it turns out that this can lead the, the high energy particle to go slightly off shell. And so it has to radiate to come back on shell. And, and this leads to this, uh, this uh, inelastic scattering where the number of, uh, of parton is not conserved and uh, actually one has to resum these because they they come with the same power uh, order as the elastic scatter. So for the elastic scatterings, usually these are described like with the usual collision integral of uh, two to two scattering distributions and the, the matrix element, which comes from three level diagrams and where because now we are in the medium, these divergences that usually are in the vacuum due to small momentum exchange can be cut off by the medium scales and by screening. And yeah, so this elastic scatterings, if you do an expansion in this momentum exchange, because you have this, uh, usually the propagator goes as uh, one over Q squared. And so for, small momentum exchange, you have a, a large enhancement. And so if you do an expansion where you take the, the very first order Taylor series of Q, you find that this Boltzmann equation, which is a integral differential equation, turns into a differential equation on the Fokker-Planck equation. And the interactions with the medium then become encoded in what these uh, transport coefficients. So here in green, we have the longitudinal drag that stops the hard parton in the medium. And then we have the longitudinal diffusion that kind of gives small kicks to, to the parton in the longitudinal direction. And one of the, the most famous one is this transverse diffusion Q hat, which gives small, which gives uh, small kicks in the transverse plane. And so it kind of uh, gives a small uh, diffusion in the transverse momentum of the of the parton uh, without changing the direction of the parton drastic. Okay, we have so, a, there's a question uh, in the Slack channel. Uh, does drag force work while the jet traverses the medium? Yeah. The, the drag kind of tries to stop the, the jet. But the drag effect is, is not very large because the, this goes as a E over T. I'm not mistaken. So for a very high energetic the jet, the drag is, is not enough to stop the jet so much. Because all these elastics processes 
for a very high energetic jet are subdominant to, to the inelastic processes that I will talk about later, right after. And those are much more dominant to make the, the jet lose energy for a very high energetic jet. But then once the jet becomes closer and closer to the medium, then these uh, elastic processes become more and more important. So the medium scales, it turns out, are governed by this uh, transport coefficient, especially this Q hat, which you can also understand as uh, the average uh, KT, which is the, the transverse momentum that the jet gains between each scattering. And so, yeah, so it's the average of this KT divided by the length of the medium that the hard part on transverses. So it's the typical momentum transfer per unit length that the part on gets. Yeah. So actually, if you think of it as virtuality, so as the part on gets this kick, it kind of gets excited and which makes it radiate. So if you think of it as a kind of medium virtuality that is gained, it's the typical virtuality that the, the jet can get is this Q hat times tau. If I just replace L by tau, which is the time that the jet spends in the medium. On the other hand, the formation time for a virtual parton, which is the time it takes the parton to separate from parent due to quantum mechanics and so this time is is also given by two times the energy divided by the virtuality square and so if you replace this q here by the medium uh, virtuality you can do, and try to solve q, for qmd you find this square root of 2e q hat which gives you a kind of transition scale where if, or if you, you can also write it as in terms of time. So it gives you this tau transition, which is a square root to, to E divided Q hat. And so it, if, if the virtuality is, is much larger than this of the parton, so the, vacuum virtuality of the parton is much larger than what the parton can gain by interacting with the medium, then the vacuum formation time is much larger because it must shorter. I mean, so formation time is faster. So as the Q becomes larger, tau becomes smaller. So if Q in the vacuum is much larger than the Q in the medium, then the formation time of the parton is is much faster, and so vacuum uh, fragmentation becomes more important than medium fragmentation. And so this is what uh, where we use matter uh, interaction or or Pythia final state radiation. So for matter, which I will talk about later, you have the splittings which are dominated by this vacuum shower, which is modified to include additional uh, medium induced radiation. On the other hand, when the virtuality becomes small comparable to what the medium can provide, then vacuum uh, formation time is much larger. And so the medium uh, in medium splittings will form before the vacuum splittings. And so then the jet medium interactions become much more important and the vacuum splittings become Subdominant. Yeah. So now the the question is, what happens in between these scales when? The, there is the, a the, question. There is a question in the uh, in the Slack, and he asked, uh, "Let me see. Uh, how does uh, Q height differ from Q height tall?" Sub tall. I don't know what what it means. Uh, sub tall. 
This is not subtle. This is pure hard time stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's just Tao is just the time. It's just, which can another question. Another question. Ask what is the Q medium, sub medium? What is what is the Q sub medium? Yeah. So when the parton interacts with the medium in this elastic scattering, it it can get excited and gain some energy that will then have to be radiated. And this energy is defined with this Q medium, which is spirituality that it gains and it has to lose the spirituality by radiating. Now the question is how to, to bridge the gap between these two regimes, between the place where the vacuum shower is more dominant and medium modification is subdominant, and then where here on the right we have the, the other way around, where cheap medium interactions are more dominant than the vacuum shower. And so the first thing to know is that this KT, this typical momentum that uh, Parton can gain from medium interactions given by Q hat L is not really the full picture. It's just in this small angle approximation, but the medium may fluctuate to much larger momentum because the medium is, is in equilibrium, but it's still fluctuating and it might give much larger KT. And so these fluctuations may result this smaller virtual dipoles and change the vacuum splitting. And this one way to implement this is to make this Q hat dependent on the virtuality of the parton. And th this is what was done in this paper and what was implemented in Chesscape, where they implemented this simple model of the of the virtuality dependence. So if you look here at the function, the Q hat times this function of virtuality. And if you look from right to left for a high virtuality, you have these lines where Q hat becomes smaller. And then as you go down to lower and lower virtuality, Q hat becomes larger and larger and goes to the normal HGL formula, which is this lines here. And so you can see this as you start from this vacuum phase and the medium interactions are then slowly turned on and change the vacuum splittings slowly until you get to, to this low virtuality phase where the media you only have medium interactions and the vacuum splittings are sub, subdominant. So now just give a short uh, explanation of how these uh, medium splittings happen. So for partons with very low virtuality, I mean, I mean we consider them to be on shell compared in the medium. These multiple scatterings with the medium can drive them slightly off shell, which will lead to this radiation. And this radiation, it turns out, has to resum uh, infinitely many diagrams, and that's because if you look at this simple diagram where you have a kick of the parton and then it radiates, the, this vertex will come with the factor of the coupling. Of course, there's another factor here. And but the propagate the gluon propagator in the medium actually goes as uh, one over m d squared, which is this divine mass, and so it goes as one over g t squared. And so for each two vertex, you will have a one over g. I mean, for each vertex, you will have one over g that comes with this gluon propagator, and so it will cancel this g. And as you get more and more scatterings, you find that they all come with the same coupling, and so they have to be resumed into into an array. Is there some other questions? I think 
I think we're all caught up uh, with the questions in Slack. So no, no, it's not. Slack oh. is there, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the no question on Slack. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so now I, I try to explain the the scales that comes into this resummation of the multiple factions that induce this radiation. So as you can see, so after these scatterings give the parton some virtuality that before it then radiates, this radiation is not instantly formed, but it also needs some formation time where it gets separated enough from the from the parent parton that the medium can resolve the two scatterings. And so this formation time, which is given by the typical momentum of this of the daughters, so just momentum of these two daughters divided by kt squared, can also be written by replacing kt squared again by you have times now the formation time. And so you find this uh, formula for the formation time. And what you find is that if you write Q hat, it's just MD squared divided by the mean feed path. So the path in the medium that the parton can go before it radiates. You can then define the two scales. One scale where the formation time is much shorter than the mean feed path. And what this means is that before the formation, there's not enough time for the medium to scatter with the parton. And so the medium cannot, re cannot resolve the parton. And so it doesn't scatter or only scatters once or before it's been, uh, before radiation. On the other hand, when the formation time is much larger, so that's for high energetic uh, splittings, mostly we'd see closer to 0 0.5. So then, the, so then the formation time is much larger than mean free path and become much larger than mean free path. And so the medium can still scatter with the parton while it's being formed. And so multiple scatterings act then coherently on this uh, type of pair. And these coherent effects uh, lead to an actual suppression of this high energy radiation, which is known as the Lando Pomerange Migdal effect, which was first uh, described in QED, and you can have a similar effect in QC. There is a uh, there is a question on the. I think there is. Uh, it said uh, first of all, there is a question that what does the collinear region refer to here. I think he's talking about probably the last slides. Yeah, so the, this radiation uh, turns out as very enhanced for uh, a parton that goes collinearly to, to the quark, for example, here. So usually it's actually computed as though the parton is, is actually collinear to the, to the high part, high energetic parton. Because the vacuum radiation can have some transverse momentum when it's radiation radiated, but in the medium, the radiation is enhanced for a collinear radiation. There is another question: saying why the language onshore offshore for patterns with virtuality much less than the threshold, like square root of Q hat times e uh, because because this virtuality is so this is the virtuality that you can gain in the medium so when the virtuality of the parton because it comes from a vacuum parton that has a high virtuality and it keeps losing virtuality when it's it's virtuality is smaller than what you can gain from the medium then you can think of this dipole as being, you can think of the parton as, uh, as on shell com uh, in the medium, because the medium can resolve it as an on shell parton. Questions? 
course, the part one is still off shell because it still has some virtuality. And because especially with QCD part ones, you, you don't think of a free quark, but because of their high energy and this asymptotic freedom, then in the medium, you can think of these high energetic part ones as being kind of free in these interactions. So here I just wanted to list the different approaches that are available for to resum this medium induced radiation. So this is PDM. Yeah, I'm not going to go into the details of how each of one works, but just list the different properties. So there's this PD EMTS C uh, approach, which is usually which considers the medium to be infinite medium so the medium length to be infinity and so what it means is that it considers that it's mainly working in the steep lpm regime where there's multiple soft scatterings with the part one and it considers that the medium interactions are mainly mediated by q hats and it turns out that the solution of this radiation rate, which is this eff effective rate, so you resum these very different scatterings into an effective one to two rate. And so this, the solution of this becomes a harmonic oscillator problem in a, a 2D quantum mechanical evolution and then can be, which can be solved analytically. On the other hand, if you consider that the medium is very thin, so it's very small, finite medium, then now you're working in this uh, regime where the medium cannot uh, resolve the quanta before it's formed, so it can only scatter very few times before the formation. You can then expand in the number of scatterings, and this is known as the opacity expansion which for the first order can be just given as a numerical integral. There's also this higher twist approach that is used in matter and LBT, which is similar to opacity expansion, where you look at a few scatterings, but it's used in a deep inelastic scattering techniques to, to find the rate. And this leads to some numerical integrals to give you the, this effective one to two rate. And then there is the Amy approach, which also works in infinite medium, and it's very similar to the, the VDMPS. But here, the medium interactions are mediated by an actual scattering kernel, but not just Q hat. And so you cannot find the simple harmonic oscillator problem. Instead, you have to solve an integral differential equation. And also, there are there are methods that use the same uh, medium interactions is the Amy approach, but then they don't take this limit of infinite medium, which makes the equations more more complicated. But they can they can also be solved into using numerical techniques, and you have this integral differential equation that can be solved and actually can reproduce Amy in the once you go to larger and larger medium. And there are other methods like improvements on the harmonic oscillator and opacity expansion that are available. People can also use for to obtain these simpler solutions without having to solve the most more complicated rates. Now okay is uh, Ismail we have, we have some more questions piling up. We have three yeah. more questions in Slack. Do you want to answer them now or do you want to yeah yeah okay Okay, so the first is why is the collinear emission enhanced in the medium? Oh, I, I see uh, Abhijit replied to that. Yeah, so there is a reply to that question in Slack, but do you? Yeah. Yeah, and I think I, I just replied that the okay. LPM leads to a destructive interference for the very collinear radiation. So it actually is the reduction. And you had that in your slide. 
I think I think that just went by very quickly. For reduction for the hard scattering. Right. No, for very collinear radiation. Uh, you know, from multiple scattering, right? That's reduced because of LPM. So the, so the collinear is, is suppressed in medium, is the answer, yeah. No, I, I mean, I, yeah. I think the LPM suppressed the hard scattering, but the radiation is still collinear to the original part only. Okay, let, let us know on the, the slide. Collinear yeah, the collinear enhancement just comes from the, the dynamics of the splitting function. I cannot remember it now from on top of my head. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, another question um, is the KT transverse momentum of the scattered parton from the leading parton? I'm not, I'm not sure I completely understand what the question does that. The KT is the, is the moment. Yeah, it's. Oh, those, what's the KT relative to? Uh, yeah, that's what they're asking. Yes, relative. relative to, it's relative to the leading parton because this gives you the separation between the, the two partons. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, another question. Yeah, so tra transverse momentum relative to the leading parton. And and then uh, a question uh, asking for a, a concise definition of the word of virtuality. What do we mean by virtuality? Yeah, so virtuality is usually first you hear about it in this Feynman diagrams where like if you have a photon sc a scattering that is mediated by a photon or for example annihilation. These photons sometimes can gain some, can have some mass just from the energy momentum conservation. And of course, photons are massless, but these are what we call virtual photons because they're not, you cannot observe them directly, but they're just comes from the Feynman diagram that they mediate this, this scattering. And so these photons, of course, directly will uh, uh, will uh, I mean will split into, for example, e plus e minus. And so this virtuality is a kind of mass that uh, parton can can have. So quarks also usually we treat them as massless, and because of this very hard scattering that happened in the PP collision, then they you know these quarks that come out excited with some additional mass and this mass then they have to lose before we actually detect them and they lose it in this fragmentation they, they fragment into different uh, quarks and gluons which then hadronize and we only detect the hadrons and so this virtuality is what you gain in kicks basically so when you have some kicks from the medium you can also gain some kind of virtuality which is this mass the kind of virtual mass hope it makes sense okay so le uh, let's keep going and then if any of those questions need further clarification we can uh come back to them at the end yeah so here i just wanted to demonstrate these different uh, effects by showing just this radiation rate of a gluon radiating another gluon so the gluon starts with a this energy E here on the left, which is square root to a thousand times temperature. And then here E is a thousand times temperature. I mean, mainly you have to understand that the left one is with, with the starting gluon has less energy than the right starting gluon. And what you can see is that the, this in dotted red is the full splitting rate in infinite medium, which is this Amy rate. And actually, if you do a leading log fitting, which is this harmonic oscillator in the deep LPM regime, you see that can actually describe the rate very well, where you have here Z closer to 0 0.5. So when you have this very hard splitting, 
you can describe them by this harmonic oscillator, which resumes infinitely many scatterings using Q hat as scattering interaction. And then on for very soft splittings, when the formation time is very small, so the parton doesn't scatter a lot, a first order opacity expansion, which is known as this beta Heidler regime, can, can describe the and you see as the parton has more energy than these regimes change as they depend on the parton's energy relative to the to the medium and to to the dot on the other hand if now we look at in a finite medium so before it was it this amy rate in infinite medium but now if we look at the finite medium and just take this plot to demonstrate again, look now it's just a quark that radiates a gluon. But that shouldn't matter so much. But now we have as a function of the evolution time, I just want you to look at the purple and this orange dotted lines here. And what you can see is that for small times, when Parton just spent a very short time in the medium, then the opacity expansion, which is this orange dotted lines, it's just the first order opacity expansion, which means just a single scattering can work very well, even for C equals 0 0.5. So even for a hard scattering, just because the parton didn't spend enough time to, to get to a, lot, a, a lot of kicks, but it only got to some single hard scattering that lead it to radiate. But then as the parton spends more and more time to get more and more kicks, the rate becomes larger and larger, but then it's not described anymore with this opacity expansion. And then as you go to a very large time, then you recover this AMU infinite medium rate. Now, how do we describe this in Chesscape? So as you have heard, Throughout this week, just gave us this multi-stage modular frame framework to study jets and the bulk dynamics of heavy ion collisions. And of course, you heard of the hydrodynamics that describes the bulk medium. And here today, we, we focus on the, the hard uh, scatterings. So these are defined. Uh, separated into different stages, which is very natural because you see that there is different scales in the system and the parton goes through different phases that have kind of different physics. And so you have initially the hard particle production that usually is described with Bitia, and then you have this multi-state shower evolution. You start with, uh, yeah, which is described here. So you start with matter, which describes this high virtual partons that are mostly going through mid, uh, vacuum fragmentation with a modification due to the medium. And then as the parton lose this virtuality and then they become resolved by the medium and they can scatter with the medium, then you have we have here few models to, to describe the scattering. So there's LBT and Martini. And there is also this ads CFT that I will not talk about today. Let me just describe briefly each of these models. So we start with matter, which is the Monte Carlo simulation of this medium modified Diglab shower. So I showed first the Diglab shower, which was this vacuum part in the first slides. In in matter, we there is a medium part that is correction to this vacuum shower, where the, here we have Q hat that describe the interactions between the jet and the medium described by this Q hat. And you have a modification of the splitting function from just this P Y to this different kernel, which, is, which can be computed by using the DIS techniques to compute this type of diagrams where you have a quark radiating a gluon that can scatter with the medium and the scattering can happen in different places. 
There is a question um, on the slide. Um, this is uh, about um, the energy loss uh, before equilibrium. He said, does this energy loss description for pre equilibrium as well, which has time scale about one formula of C, and how do that include how to include that effect in Zscape? Does the Trento text Trento and IP Glasma text scale of that? Yeah, th this is something we we don't have in Zscape yet, because we assume that this should be much smaller than the uh, than the medium uh, energy uh, please, loss. Please. Uh, just a small. I just want to make a small clarification. There is, uh, uh, you know, by effective temperature. It, it, it can be included, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a, a, a description of the initial state in full non-equilibrium dynamics, right? But if you can ascribe an effective temperature to that, then yes, then that, that's how we include it, right? Yeah, because right now we have this T0, which is the time that the hydrodynamics starts, and that's when we start the the energy lost, but you can change T0 to yeah to to be zero. And so meaning to start from the right at the scattering and then you just have to give a effective temperature because the temperature is what governs this jet medium interactions. Yeah, so I think there was a discussion on this earlier in the week um, that you could actually in Jetscape, you can take the T0, the, the tau zero, whatever, the starting of, of jet quenching, you can take it to be earlier than even when the medium uh, starts hydrodynamics. And in, in that case, what it does is it, 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 it you know, it takes the non-equilibrium medium and tries to get an, an effective temperature out of that and then use that to calculate Q hat. That's not a perfect world, but uh, yeah, I mean, until we, there is a, an actual simulation that can give you Q hat for a full non-equilibrium medium, uh, this is the, the best that we can do. Yeah. Yeah, and now once the parton has low virtuality, it goes to these energy loss models with where you have more jet medium interactions. And one of these models is uh, LBT, which is uh, just based on the linearized Boltzmann uh, transfer equation, where you have the elastic scatterings that are just described by the 222 three diagrams. And then the inelastic scatterings are using this uh, higher twist single uh, gluon emission kernel, which is resumed using uh, this multiple scattering scheme. And we consider the, the multiple scattering, so, so multiple gluon emissions using a Poisson distribution. And so the medium induced radiation is given by this uh, probability distribution, which is a Poisson distribution. And so this one minus uh, exponential gives you the probability knows this scattering. On the other hand, there is also Marcini, which uh, for the elastic scattering is uh, very similar to LPG, it uses similar rates. But for the inelastic scattering, it uses uh, an AME infinite medium rate that is uh, computed uh, using this AME approach. And so it can have a, a lot of radiation. But these are just two different approaches. Uh, on the other hand, so once the par parton starts interaction with the medium, we we sample these scatterings by sampling the equilibrium distribution, where the only parameter is the temperature that we get from hydrodynamics, and so by considering that there is a, a local equilibrium, we we then sample the uh, local uh, equilibrium distributions and uh, perform scatterings, these two to two scatterings. 
but the question is what happens to these medium particles that scattered and so this is what is known as medium uh, response because it's hard partons are scattering off the medium the medium also itself will become modified due to the partons and one way you can implement this medium response is using this uh, recoil hole formalism where you consider that this is sampled parton from the medium to be a holes that you then just we just uh, uh, sure. involve them in a free streaming and consider them to be negative partons. And the recoil partons, which is the other leg of leg of the two to two scattering, is considered then the recoil partons. And by at the end of the evolution, you take the recoil parton and subtract the holes, and you get a kind of medium response. Of course, there, there's other better ways to do medium response, which is to take these uh, recoil and holes and uh, add them to the hydrodynamics using a source term. But then you start to have to do a two-stage hydrodynamic evolution where you have to do uh, a hydrodynamic evolution for every jet. And this is very costly numerically, but uh, this is possible in Jetscape. This is will become important also for for results. Uh, is there any question here? No, no not here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now I move on to show some Jetscape results. So first of all, I show the DP results. So that. We reproduce the baseline data because when you talk about energy loss, you need to compare these AA collisions to PP to see how these hard partons get modified by the medium. So here I show different ratios of Jetscape results to Pythia compared to the Atlas, the different data. So here Atlas and Alice and CMS star. And we see for different jet spectra and your inclusive charged particles, you see very good agreement with the data and the Jetscape can reproduce actually the baseline PP results. Now here I talk about the RAA, which is the ratio between the PP spectrum to the lead lead spectrum. Uh, normalized to the binary collisions. And here in uh, our, in this RAA Jetscape paper, we compared the different models for Q hat. So this transport coefficient, either by using the fixed formula for Q hat that you can get by uh, using HGL theory, integrating the HGL theory or the same formula, but having one coupling to be running with the, with the scale of, of the jet and the, the temperature. So the scale of the sca elastic scattering, which is here in dotted green. And then in solid red is this running Q hat, but times the function of the virtuality of the parton. So now instead of switching between L, uh, marker and LBG very quickly, I mean, uh, abruptly here we do a kind of a more modular switch between the two where Q hat doesn't become very large, uh, very fast, but slowly goes to larger and larger values. And what we see is to be able to describe both the jet data here on the left and charged hadrons. And simultaneously, we find that this f of u squared is needed to describe both these data. This kind of confirms this multi-stage approach and 
especially that you need to actually have kind of dynamical multi-stage approach, which is going from one stage to the other. Now, to show the effect of medium response, I showed here this, this plot of the jet RAA, where the red line here, the, the blue line is without this whole subtraction, and the red line with the whole subtraction, and you see that without these holes, you actually overestimate the RAA, and you need this whole subtraction to, to bring RAA down for this low, and PT jets, and that shows how medium response is important. On the other hand, if we look at the more differential observables, like for example, this jet shape function, which is a distribution of uh, partons in the jet uh, around the ring with the radius R, here you have different rings, with different radii that come to different uh, bins. And what you see again is that without uh, the recalls, you cannot describe this uh, large uh, angle partons, but only when you include the recalls in the solid line that you, you retain some large angle partons that came from the recalls of the medium. For this kind of observables where you need better treatment, better understanding of our medium response, this one needs to actually do this two stage hydro where the recall and holes are actually put into the medium because these partons are very soft. So they have to then, and they can then change the actual hydrodynamics and uh, uh, equilibrate with the, with the meat. Maybe there's some question here before I go to the summary. Uh, <clears throat> okay, there is a question. It says, <clears throat> why there is a discrepancy between Atlas and this gap result at high JPT? Oh, you mean this here, this way? Yeah. This, I'm, I'm not sure if I can answer this. This discrepancy between the, the purple and black lines here. I, well, I, I mean, mean, I'd say that there is consistency with CMS, which is which has a discrepancy <laughs> with Atlas. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, there. There are newer Atlas results in the substructure paper that are that are that are a little higher, but still consistent with with the older Atlas data. But I think the best answer to the question is the experiments are somewhat discrepant, as as is the theory. And to be, yeah, yeah to it, it's a topic of continued investigation. Yes, especially this point here still has large this is still unresolved, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so to summarize, so factorization allows us to have a natural separation of scales between the different scales of the fragment parton fragmentation. And this also leads naturally to have a multi-stage approach, which employs the right models at the right scales, and then it tries to marry the different models, and which also led to new approaches that can bridge the gap between this vacuum and medium shower. And we've seen that these are actually are very important for to simultaneously describe the jet and hadron observable different experiments. And yeah, and, uh, next today you will hear the hands on tutorial to try to reproduce these results with Chatur. And on Monday, I also advise you to go listen to heavy flavor energy loss, which will be similar to today, but show you how heavy flavor also has different mechanisms. 
when it interacts with the medium and the light flavor we talked about. Okay, any, uh, thank you, Ishmael. Any, any uh, additional questions? Okay, if, if not, and we had, we had quite a few questions during the session. So, and if, if you have additional questions, feel free to type them into Slack uh, over the break. But I think now we'll we'll break for approximately fifteen minutes, and then return on the uh, return for the hands-on session. So I guess we resume. Uh, well, my my time zone that would be seven thirty, but ten ten thirty Eastern, and we'll we'll see you we'll see you all back then. Um, JF, shall shall we pause the recording or stop it? I think we just leave it on. It's only for fifty minutes that break, right? We I, we we'll pause it then. Yeah, yeah. Easy to do. Okay. You should really pause the recording. Okay, so we're on we're on the half hour. Most of the participants are here, so I think. I think we can go ahead and continue, and we haven't we haven't had any more questions in Slack in the meantime. So, okay. So, uh, Chathu, uh, whenever you're ready, go ahead and start. Okay. Thank you, Ron. So, today we are going to do hands-on session on uh, uh, part on energy loss part uh, of this Jetscape school, and. During this part, it is similar as the previous hands-on sessions. You can ask any question to Slack, and we'll try to answer them as fast as possible. And during this session, uh, Ismail and Ritoban will help me uh, to answer any questions, and also all the other uh, other people can answer any question and uh, it will be uh, fast as usual. So the goal of this session, uh, I divided it to four parts. In the first part, uh, we are trying to learn how to use XML configuration to combine different modules like Parton Gun, Petya Gun, uh, Hydro files, matter lbt these kind of module and in the second part uh, we are trying to uh, visualize uh, the part on shower uh, generated by jetscape framework and in the third part uh, how to set up a nuclear pdf uh, inside the jetscape and uh, run simulate pp and uh, lead, lead or a collisions and the last part is done by ritoban uh, here you can uh, simulate using hydrodynamic medium response uh, in a strongly coupled approach. And we will follow the instructions outlined in the readme file. I saw most of the people already uh, following these instructions. It's good. And uh, we'll, so I'm going to try to finish my part uh, for like, after an hour or so, then Ritoban will take over after that. The first part, uh, we are trying to simulate and try to get uh, this kind of uh, uh, graph structure, which uh, shows the uh, part on shower uh, inside the uh, Jetscape simulation. And in this tree graph, uh, all the partons are listed, including the recoil partons and uh, the transverse momentum and the energy of each parton is noted in, in for each parton. You cannot see it exactly here. When we do the hands-on session, you can see it by yourself. And then it shows the time taken after first split uh, for each vertices uh, shown in this graph. So let's uh, 
go to the uh, simulation part and uh, try to start over. Okay. So in this, uh, for, for first, uh, I would like to know uh, how many of you uh, completed this getting started portion I know most of the part uh, parts are actually completed uh, during the previous hands-on sessions, but uh, just to get some idea, can you uh, can we use a small poll, quick poll, uh, to see how many of people are completed and uh, not completed? You can use thumbs up and thumbs down. Uh, I can see one thumbs down. So uh, if you have any question, you can uh, post it in the Slack and uh, we can uh, try to answer your question. But so far I only saw one thumbs down. Okay, since most of the people are done with this, uh, getting started part uh, i i am not going to uh, go through this i just start my docker container by using this command okay now i am inside my docker container so I have got all these materials, uh, but I know all of you people, all of you uh, got this material uh, beforehand during the previous hands-on sessions. So uh, let's move on to the uh, first part. That means the second uh, topic that is toy models for jet energy loss. So if you don't have completed this previous part, uh, you can, if you have an issue, you can post it in the Slack and we can uh, try to answer uh, your issues. And for this uh, toy model for jet energy loss, what we are doing is we are, uh, we are trying to use uh, parton gun and matter and LPT inside a hydro profile and then we are trying to uh, get a, a part on shower graph that I showed in uh, the slides. So first let's look at this uh, XML file, what we have in this XML file. So let's go to that XML file. So in that XML file, we are only running for one event because we are using that one event to get generate the shower shower graph. And we said to use hydro uh, for one event as well. Uh, when we are using this to use hydro, so we need uh, set it uh, according to how many, uh, how many hydro events we have. So in this case, we have only one hydro event and we need to set uh, this reuse hydro greater than or equal to the number of events. But if you have more hydro events, you can change the reuse hydro accordingly so that uh, it uh, take, take over after uh, some events. Like uh, when first hydro uh, event finished, it is uh, from like, if you have 10 hydro events uh, and uh, 100 events that we need to run, then we can set reuse hydro to 10 or 10 so that after 
10 events they go to the next hydro event and after 20 events then it goes to the next and so on and uh, similarly uh, as i explained in the uh, framework session we have uh, write a part uh, given like this and For the hydro module, we are getting hydro uh, from the file that we uh, downloaded in the examples. And we are using matter and LBT modules with colorless hydronization. So let's run this and see how we can get the graph. So to run this, just copy. Uh, this command, paste it. So I, we need first. We need to go to the uh, escape and build. Then you have to run. You can run this command. So we have one question. Uh, why have you set the seed value here to two? So seed value, you can set it to any value. If you use seed value zero, that means it's completely random. Other than that, if you can use any value for the seed and it will uh, generate the event uh, according to that seed. Like if you use uh, seed value greater than uh, zero then uh, each time it generates the same events but if you use zero uh, every time it changes the event configuration okay so the event is done uh, then then let's do this trader test uh, in this data test, it reads to the uh, reads to the event uh, output file and uh, generate the graph. And we can visualize that graph using uh, some software. Here we are using GraphVis. There is uh, there is uh, some comment that uh, on Slack that said that's getting some kind of error. Okay. I think even though you got that uh, line. You, your event will be completed. That's uh, that's coming from the hydro event, uh, hydro file that you have. So now we finish the reader test. Yeah, so the the error that uh, shown in this Slack, actually it's uh, coming from the HDFI because of the uh, hydro profile that we are using that, that you can ignore, I guess. Uh, 
and so for the graphics if you haven't already installed graphics you can use uh, one of these commands outside the docker container uh, to get the uh, graphics and then you can run this line outside the docker container so i will go outside the docker container and run this line and it generates this uh, output pdf uh, inside the build directory uh, so let's go and check that uh, so this output pdf we can open this output pdf and you can see uh, starting from the initial part on that is coming from the uh, uh, pgun we have uh, this is the initial part on and uh, this is where I, the first split happens at zero and then we have uh, all these patterns, uh, you can check their data, all the the PT and the energy are listed for all patterns like this, and the time is listed here. Okay, so let's see how many of you were able to uh, complete this part. If you have completed, yeah, you can use the thumbs up and if you haven't, use the thumbs down. Yeah, I can see one thumbs down. If you have any question uh, or if you are just lagging behind, so if you have any question, you can always ask from Slack. I'll try to answer uh, many any of them, and if I haven't been able to any, uh, you can get the answers rather quickly from someone else. Okay. So this is a kind of a straightforward uh, uh, simulation, and it won't take much time because we are only using one event. So. Now let's move on to the uh, second part uh, where we are generating uh, energy spectrum. Uh, for that, we need to uh, run, run two uh, Jetscape simulation, one for PP and one for lead lead. Here also we are using PGUN uh, and Uh, let's see the uh, hydro XML file that we are using. So So for the vacuum, we are setting number of events for hundred. Uh, since we are using p gun uh, 100 we can do 100 events but uh, if i use if you are doing realistic simulation 100 events can take some time uh, and similarly as uh, as we did in uh, the framework session uh, we set uh, uh, everything uh, like uh, pp19 tune but uh, we are not using any uh, hadronization we are just using the uh, partonic uh, partonic uh, final state partonic results uh, for this analysis okay and 
we can do this analysis by using these uh, XML files. You can just copy these lines and just paste it here. I mean, there's there is, no. E e there is a question uh, in the Slack. Ask, uh, do we see a sizable difference when tuning on hydro for PP in JScape? I don't understand. Is a is a typo? Is tiny on? I can, I think. She, what do you mean tiny on? Oh yeah. So the. There's no use turning on hydro for PP, I would say, because uh, in PP simulations, we are using um, vacuum simulation, so there's no medium. Uh, so turning on hydro doesn't mean anything in that case. So even though you turn on hydro, it will not take into account when we set uh, vacuum simulation on in a matter portion i think but i ne i never tried like that but if you use uh, hydro uh, yes abhijit uh, I just want to clarify the question. I mean, is it is it connected with uh, the other day's lecture where they were using a hydro even in PP for initial state effects? Is is that is this question related to that? No. Okay. I, I, I don't know if, because if that's the case, then I just want to say that even if you did turn it on, the hydro and PP is so tiny that you will not have any energy loss effects, right? And yeah, in some cases, the jet might even completely miss the medium in the in PP because there'll be a tiny bit of hydro in some corner, and the jet will go off in some other direction. So that hydro has practically very little effect. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, uh, that's what uh, uh, the question meant, I think. Thanks, Abhijit. So the PP event completed and we can uh, PP and lit. Yeah, both PP and lit events completed. Uh, now we can do the analysis uh, with Jupyter Notebook. So you can use Jupyter Notebook inside or outside the Docker container. If you use, uh, if we go up. So when you when you define your when you create your Docker container, if you use this minus b eight 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 part in your command, then you can use uh, Jupyter Notebook inside the Docker container. If not, you have to use it outside the Docker container because this option uh, is required to run Docker container inside the uh, container. But the only thing is you have to change the path. Other than that, uh, everything else is straightforward, even though you are inside or outside the Docker container. So we can start the Docker container. Uh, 
this command is uh, for the if you are inside the docker container so if you are outside the docker container you have to cd to this path uh, in your computer so this uh, starting point uh, can be different depending on where you are placing your uh, summer school uh, repository So when we do this, we will get uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, result and we can copy this part, uh, the, the address with uh, 127 in it and copy this and paste it on Let me get another window. <clears throat> okay. So in your case, you might not have all these files. These are the files generated after we running uh, these cells. And don't worry about that. You will only have these four files if you are doing this for the first time. Just go to this. Uh, D and D is spectra. So these file paths are generated if you are inside the uh, Docker container. If not, you have to change these paths accordingly. So uh, depending on where, where you uh, escape, uh, escape uh, directory, you can change this path accordingly. Uh, only this portion of the part do you need to change. Okay. So the number of events we have was 100. Uh, I think in the most uh, recent one, you don't have these uh, differences. So we only have one uh, uh, lead lead result. So you can just run this uh, cell like this. And this cell is uh, some uh, preparations that uh, require to generate these plots. You can just run this. Hmm. And this cell is the uh, is to generate the ratio. And since we have only one uh, letter result, I'm only I'm just deleting the. Uh, Second lead lead result part. Okay. Now it generates the plot like this. And since we have 100 events, uh, these results have very large errors, but you can try it with large number of events, like uh, maybe 1,000 events. Uh, it will generate a somewhat smoother result than this. So I think now it is a good time to take a poll uh, to see if uh, everybody able to make this result. Hi, hi Ron, there is a poll button that you can press and that will start a poll. 
That's great. I've been, yeah, I've been looking for it. where, or maybe can you make me co-host? I think I, I lost my connection for a second and it dropped me from being co-host. There was a poll button yesterday, and that that seemed to work. <laughs> I don't. Oh, I can launch that. I I will launch it. Oh, ah, there you go. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. And where, Chathi, where did you go to launch that poll? Uh, so there's a, a poll poll section in the line that we have mute video and everything. Uh, oh, and there's at the bottom of the Zoom controls. Okay. Yeah. I was looking, yeah. All right. I was looking at the participant window. Ah, I see it says polls. Okay. Great. Thank you. I can yeah. I can try to set the next one up for you when you when you're ready. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, it seems good. Uh, we, yeah. Now we can end the poll. Okay. Okay. So uh, now since uh, everybody is uh, okay with that, okay, catching up with the result. So let's try to move on to the next part. So we can close this and then exiting this is just press control C uh, from here and it will ask to shut down and you can shut down. So uh, if you didn't make make any changes, uh, then it will just uh, plot uh, plot two plots. Uh, let me show the changes uh, if I was able to do that. Okay, so this is without any, uh, this is with the change actually. So uh, there's a line for the second uh, file of lead lead. That means if you have two results, then we can, uh, uh, we can generate uh, two lines for lead lead. Uh, I was planning to do that, but uh, since we have, we don't have enough time, I only, uh, I only have time to generate one lead lead event. So you can remove the second lead lead event from here. Then if you remove that, then you have to remove all the lines uh, in the in the fourth cell uh, with the uh, lead lead two in it uh, so that it uh, it won't give you an error. But if you if you run as it is, it will generate the same plot twice and you, you will have uh, Alpha is 0.2 and alpha is 0.3 in the ledger. That's the only thing happens if you don't delete anything. Okay. So if you are outside the Docker container, you will get a file not found error. Then you have to change the file path. So I I guess in the question you are using you are using uh, uh, 
Jupyter notebook outside the Docker container. So in that case, yeah, in that case, you have to change the home Jetscape user part into the actual part that you you escape uh, escape uh, directories. So it's it's exactly depend on uh, your system. Okay. I assume that answered his question. Okay. Uh, now then in the next part, uh, we are doing some Jet analysis. In this case, we are only using 50 events, and you will see that when we are using 50 events, we will get some issues with the plots. But if you use uh, like 200 or 250 events, then you will get uh, all the results properly. Even if you can use even more, that that would be perfect. So for this time just we can use uh, 50 and and i will show what i got uh, when we are using uh, 250 events uh, then you can do it as a homework maybe. okay first let's look at this xml file that we are using because in this case we are not using pgun we are using uh, petiagun and so Uh, in this case, my XML file, uh, I just set it to uh, 250. So I will set it to 50. And you don't need to change this name. I will change it because I want to show you the results with uh, 250 events. That's why I'm changing this. And you don't need to change this. So uh, in here, we are using Petyagan. Mm. We are setting PT hat min to 100 and PT hat max to 160. Uh, that is uh, similar in Petya, we are using PT hat region uh, so that jets are created within that region. And for the energy loss, uh, we are using uh, matter energy loss for vacuum and uh, for hadronization, colorless hadronization. And the other one is uh, lead lead. Here also, uh, I am setting it to 250. So if you are using, uh, so in the XML file provided, it said n events 50 and reuse hydro to 50. So if you are using more than uh, 50 events you have to change this end reuse hydro uh, greater than that uh, number of events uh, if not it will give, give you an segmentation fold uh, but in this case you don't need to change anything and here also i'm changing this uh, output file name uh, just to show you the results with 250 events and you don't need to change that. And 
Here we are using initial state profile provided with the hydro in the examples directory. And for the hard cross section, uh, hard process, we are using uh, same PT head range and we are using nuclear PDF. So if we go back to the go back to the slide okay so you can decide the reuse hydro value depending on how many hydro events you have in this case you only have one hydro event that means one hydro event from file so in that case you have to use a value equal or greater than the number of events but if you have if you, you may have like many hydro events let's say you have 10 hydro events then you can change it uh, if you need to run 50 events you can change into five that means after each five events it changed the hydro profile to the next one so if you use something less than that what happens is after hydro profiles are finished it will give segmentation for it. So make sure to use the reuse hydro value properly. Uh, in all these simulations, you have to use it equal or greater than the number of events. Okay. And so we were talking about the uh, nuclear PDF. So in this definition of nuclear PDF, uh, we need to turn on nuclear PDF uh, by using this lines to read part. Uh, so uh, these two lines uh, are for the nuclear PDF. So here we need two lines for two initial, uh, uh, so two initial, uh, to initial nuclei to collide dot and uh, these two lines after that are for the uh, new type of nuclear pdf you need to use so you can choose to different nucleus or same nucleus so in this case we are uh, uh, two different nuclear pdf or same nuclear pdf for both file both uh, nuclei so we are using this nuclear, nuclear PDF. And last, these two lines are for the PID of the nucleus. For the lead, we use this PID. And that's it. that is the most important thing you need to know about this, uh, this XML file. Uh, other than that, everything is somewhat similar to what we did in the framework session. So now uh, we can run these two lines. First one. Oh. Yeah, we can only use PDF Savel in Petya. Uh, I don't know exactly how we can use uh, some other PDF not available in Petya. Uh, And let's run the PP uh, events. So I use in 50 event. No, first we need to go to the uh, escape build directory. Then you can run this command. So, do you, oh, do you want me to set up a poll, uh, Chasu? Uh, 
so oh, no. let's wait until uh, these uh, two events uh, two sets of runs are finished then we can start a poll i guess so as you can see these events take longer time to run compared to the previous events because we are using uh, here we are running a realistic event but yesterday uh, as you can see yesterday it can take longer time uh, when we are including hydro or uh, other modules available okay so we ran 50 events for the pp and let's run 50 events for lead lead it take even longer Okay, so now it is a good time to take a poll run. I guess we can take a poll if everybody if to see if everybody is on live. Okay, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Ron. I can see the poll. Okay. Yeah, in my case as well, it takes the longer time. And so it can be more faster depending on your system. And so so we'll wait until level twenty and uh, try to move on. It sounds good. Everybody's uh, catching up. Uh, we can stop the poll. Thank you.
so it looks like uh, it takes longer time to for this to finish so i will just uh, stop at this point because i'm going to use uh, the events i generated early and then let's move on to the next part uh, so here uh, we are doing is we are doing the uh, jet reconstruction from here then do the analysis in the uh, Jupyter notebook. So for that, first you have to initial, uh, you have to do some initialization. Uh, for that, you need to just run this init. And then, then there might be some error, uh, which is coming from this, uh, coming from this module. So you may need to install this module uh, as well. In my case, I already installed, so it won't do uh, much. But if you haven't installed it, uh, you might need to install that. And then uh, we can do the uh, jet reconstruction. For that, there is an analysis script. Uh, it is jet reconstruction.py. Let's see what is inside. So, the most important part of this is you have to change the number of events uh, to whatever the number of events you have. So, uh, I think this is set to 50 in your case, but if you have more events, you have to change that to uh, the number of events you have. I think it is, uh, it is uh, line 34. Uh, other than that, you don't need to change anything. It will uh, reconstruct jets uh, uh, from the events that you have. So since I am using uh, 250 events that I generated earlier, so uh, I will use uh, 250 over there, but uh, you can change it accordingly. So then you have to do this uh, reconstruction analysis uh, twice for PP and lead lead. When you do that, it will uh, show how many events uh, reconstructed. Once it go to number of events, it will finish. Then you can go to the lead lead one and do the same. So now we created the uh, files, uh, two files uh, for PP and lead lead after reconstructing. Uh, these files looks like this, and uh, it contains uh, each jet and its constituents inside. And here we use uh, R equals 0.4. And now uh, we can do the analysis in the uh, Jupyter Notebook. So, so now, uh, can we have a quick uh, poll, uh, Ron? Yeah. OK, so. Okay, it looks great. Yeah, it can take a lot of time to uh, do the simulation. Uh, but you can always uh, try with higher number of simulation as a uh, high number of events for this, uh, these simulations as, as homework. Then your results will be more 
Uh, dit lesere. Okay, it seems good. Uh, so nobody is stuck. Uh, everybody is uh, working on. So we can move on. Okay. So. So here you need to go to this uh, jet analysis part. So here we take uh, these uh, two files after reconstruction and JetR is 0.4. Uh, depending on your number of uh, events, you can change these two numbers. So in this case, since I am using 250 events, uh, I will keep it as it is. But if you have 50 or any other number of events, you can change it accordingly. Okay, so on the first cell, uh, the second cell is uh, preparations, similar to the previous Jupyter notebook and definition of the ratio and error. And here it loads uh, the two files. And now uh, we are moving to the jet spectrum. Uh, the definition of jet spectrum used here is this one. And using these uh, two uh, reconstructed jets, we can create the jet spectrum like this. And then the jet array from these two results, we can generate like this. So it's little above. You can uh, you can always change the limit of y, like uh, maybe up to two. And then uh, here uh, we plot the jet fragmentation function. The definition is given here. You can see the results for jet fragmentation function. and the ratio of the fragmentation function. And finally, the jet shape, which is defined uh, by these functions. And the ratio. You can play with these analysis codes and the simulations and, uh, and do uh, your kind of analysis on this result. Uh, for the last time, we can have a poll for this part. Then I will hand over this session to Ritoba.
here you can see most of the people are uh, done or caught up in caught up something so that's great so The next part is the hydrodynamic medium response. Uh, so Ritoban will take over from here and uh, show you how to generate uh, a MUI uh, from this hydrodynamic medium response result. Ritoban. Uh, thank you, Chaturanga, for your presentation. Uh, Dr. Sauls, can you make me the co-host? Only then I will be able to share my screen. Uh, yeah, hang on, just one second. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, so is my screen visible now? Yes. It's okay. So yeah. So hello everyone. So in the last thirty minutes, I will mostly cover how the jet affects the hydro media, and like. What's the, what response, how the jet partons are creating a response in the media. So as Ismail and Chaturanga has already covered in the first two sessions, uh, that like, like in the medium, in the vacuum, when the, when the parton is propagating, it creates a shower and most of the, and the splitting, the parton is mostly driven by the virtuality factor. But now when there is a QGP, there will be, uh, the partons will be prone to collisional energy loss, uh, and these collisional energy loss will induce will modify the splitting. So, because of the media, not only the parton shower is affected, but the jet itself, the parton shower itself is propagating some energy to the media itself. Means it is giving energy to the media. So, as the as the as the jet shower is propagating, it's going forward. It is giving out energy in the media. So, uh, so like as it is going forward in the media, it is disrupting the equilibrium in the hydro media, and these disruptions in the these disruptions actually propagate in the media, and finally they thermalize. So, so it actually creates a wake in the thermodynamic in the hydro media. So because of this wake, the wake that is generated that is generated by this jet, they go on. They also hydronize, and the Hard, uh, the hadrons which are uh, hadron uh, the hadrons which are formed by this wake they also become a part of the jet they mostly cover the like they mostly cover the part which is surrounding the uh, hadronized particles from the hard partons and they are equally correlated to the hard parton which initially initiated the fragmentation so we have to take the take these hadrons which are formed by the wake which is generated in the media. So in order to do this, there is already one procedure that is a weakly coupled disruption, which Ismail has already covered in his slides. The next is the strongly coupled disruption. So what happens is, as I told you, the jet is slowly propagating in the media and it is continuously, it is giving out some energy in the media. So in order to account for the energy, which is given up in the hydro media, we create a source term. So we say that all those energy, which is given out in the India, uh, that is given out in the media. By accumulating all this ener all those energy, we make a source term. And so in normal hydrodynamics, we have this uh, relativistic hydrodynamic equation with no source term. But now with all this energy which is collected from, which is collected from this energy which is given to the media, we create this source term and we solve this differential equation, which now gives us a new hydro media. So, Okay, I see that there are some questions in the Slack that says that could you differentiate between the medium induced effect and medium response effect. So what happens is now that there is a media, um, now that the jet sees a media, there are more collisional energy losses. And because of the collision energy losses, the, there are like the splitting, there, there are more splittings. And because of the splittings, uh, because so as the jet is propagating, it is of course giving out some energy in the media. Okay, so 
because the ener- because of the those energy which is given up in the media there is a medium response which is generated so this is the response i'm talking about the next question is what is meant by wave so so this response which is created with the medium that i am you know denoting by wave so i'm telling that because of the energy given out by the jet in the media it is creating a wave okay you can see like uh, the jet is giving out some energy and it is creating a wave in the media so so the slipify module is actually collecting all those so as the jet propagates it uh, uh, collects those part partons which could be part of the soft media this part is done by the liquefier module and we will see in the hard on se- uh, hands on session that how it's done so in the hands on session we are uh, so we have an xml file where the energy loss section is uh, mostly dealt by the inner matter and the lbt module so matter mostly covers the high virtuality partons and lbt the low virtuality partons we are in init- we are creating a uh, part on with p gun with 200 gb energy and the final hadronization is colorless hadronization is happening and so in order to account for the energy which is going in the media we are putting a liquefier as well and we are setting a card that when the scalar product of this momentum times the flow velocity is less than 2 gb the partons will go to the liquefier the initial medium we are generating by using the trento for the hydro medium we are using mu- music and for the hydronation part we are using iss okay so i see that there is one more question and so like it says that in medium induced effect jet properties are modified and in medium response effect uh, i should see so when the jet is propagating because of the media the jet itself is changing of course so because there is media there will be more collisional energy losses the fr- splitting will be much more frequent and because the jet is also giving out some energy to the media as well as well so the media will also change so both are changing okay so going forward so in our xml file before like previously we only had one hydro session but in order to like in order like in order to account for the source term we are also putting a second music file so what will happen is the mu- the hydro profile will run from the hydro profile we'll have the information about the temperature and the flow velocity we will use this information in the matter and lbt module when where energy loss is done so as matter and lbt is running in parallel liquefier is also running so so as the jet propagates in time it will see that okay like at this time split this amount of these number of partons can are affecting the media and all those partons are stored up in the liquefier okay so so now the whole uh, now the uh, shower has propagated we have in the liquefier we have collected all those partons which are affecting the source term which is, which is affecting the media so now we are again running the hydro uh, running uh, again running the hydro uh but now we are running it with the source term okay and how we are generating this source term we are generating this source term with all whatever information we have collected in the liquefier so now uh our hydrodynamic relativistic equation have this source term in it and so uh by doing this we are taking account of the medium response effect which is generated uh when the jet is uh going through the media so if you see the xml file i will uh, show the xml file there will be two hydro parts one is hydro 1 one is hydro 2 so in both this hydro files uh, in in both this uh, in both this hydros the initial uh, the initial conditions will be same but just that in the second hydro there will be also the source term which are calculated using uh, by the liquefier module so uh, in order to like uh, set this liquefier on you have to add this add liquefier tag in the second hydro module and put it to true make it true and in the energy law so in the energy law section as well there is a liquefier tag which you have to set on so i will like show you in the excel so if you start the docker container
and um, so here you can see that uh, we have number of events because we have a little shortage of time so we are like only we will be only generating only one event we have set re we have uh, make this set reuse hydro tech to two um, and uh, as said we have uh, p gun with initial transfer momentum set to 200 and we have the liquefier uh, this liquefier module section where like it has different parameters and this is the first hydro module. This is the, uh, and then there is the second hydro module as well. So you see that in the second hydro module as well, there is an add liquefier term, which you have to set to true. And in the energy loss module as well, there will be an add liquefier section we have, which you have to set to true. So I think that uh, like uh, when you have get pulled the repository, so in your section, uh, in your XML file, this liquefier section will be there. So what you have to do is to first copy paste this section. Okay, so you just need to copy copy this section. Okay, so once you have copied the section, uh, you need to go to escape, escape directory. In the config directory, you have to go go and open the Jetscape main XML file. So if you go to Jetscape main XML file, there the liquefier module is not added in your version of Xscape. Okay, I've already done that for myself. So, uh, so you need to paste the liquefier section which we have just copied. Okay, but make sure that you do not copy it inside some other, like you do not copy it, you know, do not copy it under the inside ELOS or in uh, inside the hydro section. Make sure that it is separated from the other uh, modules. So once you have pasted it, we are ready to run the XML file. So maybe uh, we can do a poll now to see that if everybody is on the same page and if everybody has copied the liquefier to the Jetscape main XML file. I'll just wait for 30 seconds to see if there are some questions on Slack. If not, I will move on. Okay, I see that around 75% have said that they're all caught up. So let's go on to running this XML file. So in order to run this XML file, you have to go to the build directory in Xscape. So, and just write run Jetscape, run Jetscape and the folder is, so what you can do is in the GitHub page for 21st July, 21st, uh, 21st July Z section, the code is already there, what you have to run. So you can just copy paste this, uh, this section, which specifies the location of the XML file, which we have to run. So I've copy pasted this and so simply paste it. So it has started running. It will take some time, though we are running one event, but because music is being run, so it will take some time to run. Okay. So by the time uh, like it is running, we can discuss some other things because this less time we can, I have some data which I've already generated. We can do an analysis on it. So you can see that uh, it will take some time to run. So you can see that if I if I open the July first Jets directory, there is a file called Music Evolution which has saved all the data which will come up after the evolution. 
So in order to do the analysis, I will open uh, Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to the notebook directory. And now if I want to open Jupyter Notebook, I need to use this command, which is there in the GitHub page. Doesn't copy and paste it. So I'm doing all of this inside the, okay. Like it's taking some time. Okay, I won't be able to run Jupyter Notebook outside it. Okay. What I can do is, so I will be running the Jupyter Notebook inside the Docker container. You can do it in your in your system. You can do it even outside the system, but my system has some problems. So I will just stop the running of the event and I will just open the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so once you paste this comment, uh, paste this command, you will get a URL that will revert you to the Jupyter Notebook page. So I'll just copy paste this. This is the same thing which Chaturanga did in his session. Okay, so in here we can see that uh, you will have various files. Okay, this is really okay. Okay, so in order to access the notebooks, uh, you would like to go inside Summer School 23, uh, July, July 21, Jet section, and inside the notebook directory. And Just copy this uh, Jupyter node command in here. Okay, so uh, in the Jupyter notebook page, you will see several files. We are only interested in this Hydro movie medium response part. So, as I told you, that um, in the July 21 JET section directory, there is already a music evolution part which stores, uh, which already has the data which we can analyze. So in order to run this blocks of command, you just need to press shift enter. So this first block just deals with setting the graph parameters. So shift enter. The second block is setting the color map. So this is the uh, result folder. I have uh, like, in our case, it is saved in music evolution, but if you want to do, like if you want to generate a movie with some other data, you need to change this as test folder. And this is, these are our two files, which we'll be analyzing. The first is the evolution all X, Y, eta music one. So this is the data which has come out of the, which has come out of the hydro profile. And this does not include jet flow, okay. And the second data includes the, jet induced flows like i was talking about the wakes so these data con uh, consist of those wakes so if i run this thing it's still running okay done So we are, we want to make a two D two uh, D contour in the transverse X Y plane. So it's taking some time to run. Okay, so I have already okay it has already done so. 
the command says that it is uh, saving a PNG picture of uh, of this file name. So this is the XY contour. If I open it, it looks some, something like that. So this is a snapshot is, uh, of the of the wake which is generated. So you can see that uh, because of the energy deposited by the jet, it is uh, and those energy are like propagating in the medium at a speed more than the more than sound so it is creating something like a something like a shock wave effect so you can see these are the uh, these are the areas which have temperature larger than the background and these like these are the high pressure regions these are kind of a low pressure regions so these have temperature lower than the background media and uh, this snapshot was taken at like a proper time 7.5 for me so so like you can change the setting and like see the form at see the snapshot at a different time so this is the database generated by by running this block of code the second is we are plotting a tau versus x x plane graph okay so this is also saving the figure uh, bed rest temperature contour tau x so in here, so this is the picture you can see that in the x axis we have tau and in the y which have the we have the x coordinate and these dashed lines are actually the are actually form the light cone. So you can see that all the energy which is which has been given out by the jet in the medium has been smeared out inside the light cone. This validates that our like this uh, use of the second hydro validates causality like whatever we are doing of whatever we are doing like adding the extra source term that that procedure is correct as it is uh, satisfying the causality conditions that is inside the light cone so you can see the smear of energy which is happening inside the light cone and for the last part we want so so th this part only created a snapshot we want to create a movie by combining various snapshots. So in order to do that, we are running the last code, last piece of code. So there's a question is, okay, this is not the answer. Okay. It's taking some time to run, last one. Uh, yes, uh, like there's one question about running the Jupiter. Yes, if you're running it from, if you're, if you're running it outside the dog container, you have to change the file locations. Like at the very beginning, you have to change this location, these ones. Or you can just hard code, uh, instead of path join, you can just from file and just hard code the, the location of that file which you're opening. So this thing has already uh, this the so the the code of uh, the block of code has already run and it has generated a file animation made. This is also saved. So it looks something like this. So the jet is propagating, and as it's propagating, it is giving out energy in the media. I will replay this thing. So this is for this is all uh, with the analysis part. So if you guys have any questions related to whatever I have done, or like you are getting stuck with some of the code part, you can put up a question in the Slack, or maybe uh, there can be one more poll to be ensure that everybody is done with the analysis. Or if the the okay. Okay, I see that some people are stuck. Okay, can we explain once more why the animation evolves the way it does as function of time? Okay, so 
So in the XML file, uh, what we did was we took a pgun. Okay, it, we took a pgun. That pgun, that Python was initially starting from x uh, from the origin, and it is going along x uh, along the x axis. Okay, so it's going along the x axis. So as the jet is going along the x axis, we see that it is giving out energy in the media. Okay. And the media that is uh, that and the energy that is that is given out in the media that is slowly being propagated out. It is it slowly propagates and then it thermalizes. Okay, so and because the propagation of this energy is uh, like is happening at a speed much larger than the speed of sound in the media, so that's why we see this shock wave kind of effect. And so it's like the jet is pushing the media forward. So there is a high pressure region forming. With high temperature and the and like if you see the uh, like so behind this high pressure region there is also a low pressure type of region is forming with lower temperature than the background media. Okay, I think that answers your question. So I see that some people are stuck with the code part. You can put up those questions in Slack. Okay, Python error while saving MP4. Can you like uh, so? Were the other part of codes running fine, or uh, they showed similar kind of problem? So you can answer in Slack itself. Like, yeah, others are fine. I think the people in Slack can also help answering this question. Like, he's saying that FF and G is unavailable. Okay, so we're we're coming to the end. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps what we can do is, uh, if you and Chathu will. Would you be periodically checking back in with Slack later in the day? Maybe we can, you, you can continue to help uh, some folks that, that might still be stuck. Is that possible? Yeah, yes, we will be there on Slack to answer the questions. Okay, so we'll, I, I guess we'll, we'll wrap up then. Uh, if the, if you have any uh, remaining questions, you type them to Slack now. We have a, a few more minutes. And then uh, if there's no further questions right right now, I think we we can continue to uh, to monitor the Slack. Uh, as as folks that maybe didn't have uh, enough time to fully catch up, uh, uh, you know, can can continue to try the exercises through, you know, throughout today and into the future. So let's uh, just take a second to thank uh, Ishmael, uh, Chathu, and Ritaban for uh, the lectures and the hands-on sessions. They're, they really did a, a fantastic job. I as a as a member of Jetscape, but a you know bystander to the summer school, I continue to be impressed with the quality of the lectures and and just the ability uh, to uh, use the Slack channel uh, to help folks uh, work through the Python uh, notebooks and the Jupyter notebooks are just excellent. Uh, they, I think they're they're uh, very useful learning tools. Okay, so with, with that, I think I'll end, end the recording. And that concludes uh, 